messages the resurrection on the parasite of the show rick tex we're glad to have you here joining us once again it's friday evening january 18th 2019 i believe we're already three weeks almost three weeks in uh, january and into the new year and as you may have guessed it is very cold outside which is why it's very important to also read every other fact how critical it is for your health to go outside regularly even when the weather is not quite advantageous and the trick is no weak links. Got to have face masks. Got to have head protection. You got to have nice thick gloves. Got to have coveralls. You got to have big thick wool socks. Sometimes multiple pairs. Sometimes you might even need to wear boots. But if you got enough pairs of socks, then a good pair of shoes will work. Coveralls definitely helps. Wool pants. Wool shirt. Throw a jacket over coveralls. Whatever, whatever it takes to get outside and to get active, ladies and gentlemen. Now, anybody who's skied and snowboard knows that. You can never dress too much in the winter time. Nobody in winter ever said they, well, you know, when the temperatures get below zero Fahrenheit, nobody ever says that they put on too many clothes or they shouldn't have put the ski mask on or the goggles or the wool socks or the leather gloves or all that stuff. It's always a good decision to definitely dress up and to get outside because as we alluded to in an earlier episode, carbon dioxide levels indoors are generally about two to three times what they are outside. And when you get up to about the 800 parts per million is when you start to get a headache and get lethargy and sluggishness and all that too. So that's why it's very critical to get outside and then you get the fresh air. And even in the winter time, there is still plenty of carbon dioxide because there are parts of the world that have healthy, warm air where trees are still green and plants are still giving off carbon dioxide, or they're sucking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen for us, the ladies and gentlemen who are in the deep north as of this broadcast. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to make sure we reiterated that fact because it is very critical to, to good health to, to just get outside regularly. Now, one of the things that we were, now we have been do, experimenting with the sound detonator equipment lately, so hopefully the that that quality is increasing somewhat, but but we'll see. Seems like the echo has sort of diminished a little bit. We we may look into getting some type of maybe a different camera or some type of microphone as well. But that's all future considerations on air production meeting. So now one of the things we wanted to tackle today. There's an article on Healthline.com. It seemed very critical. Maybe not quite an emergency broadcast, but definitely something that that we wanted to look into. Okay, there's a common food preservative in processed food that, that may be making you tired. Now, well, what, that, what that ingredient is, what that preservative is, is inorganic phosphate found in 70% of foods in the U.S. diet. Now, there's a test that was done on rats. One of the reasons why they use rats is because they have a lot of similarities to humans. They're mammals and all that too. Now, yeah, humans walk on two legs and rats on four legs, but by and large, they are fairly similar. So rats eating too much phosphate showed a lack of oxygen uptake while exercising and an inability to produce fatty acids to feed themselves and to feed their muscles, more importantly. So they, saw, they found a direct correlation between the inactivity and the phosphate levels. So as the inactivity increases, the phosphate levels also increase. Now, phosphates are critical as it contains phosphorus used in the building of bones and teeth. But these are phosphates in an organic state. Now, what that means, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear inorganic and organic, you think we're, we're talking chemical bonds here. So if it's organic, it's carbon, it contains carbon. And if it's inorganic, it's something else, usually a salt or, or whatever. So phosphates are 
usually found naturally in meat, fish, dairy, fruits, and vegetables. So in their natural state, phosphorus is generally great for people. Unless you have some type of kidney ailments, then it's then all bets are off. But by and large, for the most part, phosphates are very good for people. The inorganic form, however, is used to elongate shelf life. And the additives, normally food additives can provide a nutrient, vitamins, minerals, or flavor. But this one is just essentially for commercial gain. Now one of the problems that we're facing, ladies and gentlemen, is maybe, maybe not, maybe it should be called overpopulation, but we're definitely, our population is definitely getting to a critical mass. And what a lot of companies need to do, especially a factory farming and commercial farming and all that, is they need to produce more product. It needs to be on the shelf longer. It needs to be able to ship through container ships or through semis or locomotives. And it needs to traverse long distances and it needs to traverse all types of, well, maybe not all types of weather conditions. There's a lot of tra tractor trailer, refrigerant track truck, uh, refrigerant trailer manufacturers that keep the air at a, at a pretty stable temperature and they control the humidity and, and all that stuff too. Maybe they even control the carbon dioxide levels as well. So the fact is inorganic phosphates is an additive that's essentially just for a longer shelf life. So it, it's, it's basically just so that for the commercial company to get a better profit with well, their items going stale or sitting on the shelf for too long and getting past their expiration date. People with kidney diseases can be at risk for phosphate level irregularity. Now, one of the different, now, the, the biggest thing that you can tell when you're trying to identify inorganic and organic phosphates is you if it's bonded with some type of think of the chemical table the the element table in, in chemistry class now you have you got your calcium and sodium and potassium if that's bonded with something it's usually considered a salt so if you see something on a label that says you generally look for foes like calcium phosphate so if, if you see the phosphate bonded with something to make it a salt then it's considered inorganic, hence the doesn't have carbon. You know, it's not bonded to um, um, a, a carbon bond or anything like that. So you should not, consumers should not eat more than 700 milligrams of inorganic phosphate. Prob it's probably best just to not eat any of it, but obviously for many people that's not really an option. So what are organic phosphates? They're ester compounds of phosphoric acid. Now ester is a class of organic compounds that can be represented by the formula R, C, O, O, R, prime, and that, and that are formed by their reaction between an acid and alcohol with the elimination of water. So some of the primary differences between the organic and the inorganic, the organic phosphates have only covalent bonds. And the organic groups bond to phosphate groups, whereas the inorganic, they have electrostatic attractions between the phosphate and the metal cation, which would be the calcium, potassium, magnesium, whatever. And the inorganic groups bond to phosphate, bound to phosphate. All right, let me, let me read that again, ladies and gentlemen. Electrostatic attraction between phosphate and metal cation, inorganic groups bond to phosphate. So the organic ones are, they have an acidic nature, parathion and malathion are, are examples of it. But by and large, it, it's very important to, I mean, there are inorganic, apparently there are inorganic phosphates in nature, whether they're man-made and they just happen to be sitting somewhere and we discovered them, or whether they actually are naturally occurring, it's, it's difficult to say. But usually, ingesting naturally occurring substances is always generally a pretty good decision, especially in this regard. And one of the problems with basically all packaged food and food inside a plastic container is it's essentially made strictly just for shelf life. It's not intended to be better tasting or healthier or better looking or anything. Well, I mean, sometimes, yeah, better looking. I mean, they will add titanium dioxide, which just whitens food. And then there are food colorings too, like red one, blue one, which also have very dangerous and deleterious effects. So you also need to definitely look into them, ladies and gentlemen. But for the most part, it's just make sure to read the labels and, and identify. See, if you look at bread, for example, that has a, a pretty big wrap list of about 100 ingredients. Maybe not quite that much, but, but at least a couple dozen. 
And, and you will see a lot. I mean, a lot of the names and wording, words on there look relatively harmless, but I mean, just seeing something as innocuous as spices, which, which could mean many different things, or seeing calcium phosphate. Now you know that it's generally going to cause lethargy and sluggishness. So it is very critical to read the labels, understand the preservatives, what they do. And yeah, I mean, sometimes maybe for fun, you can just read a label and write down everything and then go look it up on uh, Bing or YouTube or Google or type it into some research websites and see what they say or what they've determined as a result of the, the chemical compound that you're, that you're looking into. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to keep a close tabs on your food consumption, preservatives and everything of that nature. We're going to go ahead and uh, call it good on this show. We actually didn't plan to do a show, but th this news article is very important and very critical, so I wanted to get it out to you that that inorganic phosphates is not a desirable thing to consume. It causes lethargy, sluggishness, and it it's basically, uh, research has proven that it's bad for, for your exercise. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we salute you, we thank you, and, and have a good night.